All right, 8.6, as you'll see, is one single page, right? It's not a very long lesson. Um, and the reason is because all this lesson does is, is it shows you how to use the tables that are in the back of your book, okay? So if you take a look real quick, appendices B or appendix B in the back of your book, and it looks like this, and it's pages A3 through A6. It's right before the solution or the, you know, the answers start at the very back of the book. These pages have on them, in particular here, different examples of how to use weird forms that you can't integrate without them. And they actually have some forms in here that you can integrate without them. They just provide a sort of a pattern for doing them that are very nice. So let me see if I can show you how this will work with some examples, okay? So as you're taking a look at this first one, integration using tables, you see that you've got x squared and you've got 1 minus x squared underneath the radical in the denominator. And if you start looking at that, you might be thinking of a couple different things. You might look at this denominator and say, oh, it looks like there's something that's got an arc tangent, arc secant, arc sine. There's an arc something in there. Um, and you might be right. The problem is that once you have that x squared on the outside of it, things get funky. It's not exactly one of the ones you've seen before. And so the tools that you have had up to this point actually don't work. So if we'll take a look, and you what you do is you're looking for something that's got this kind of a look to it, a 1 minus x squared in it on these. So these tables actually look just like that. You look through them, this is fun stuff, and you're trying to find something that looks like the square root of a number minus x squared. That's exactly what you're looking for. And the one that's on here is actually number 35, and I will write down for you what it looks like in here. It's exactly this. So in this page, number 35, so go ahead and write for yourself, this is number 35, it's actually on page A4, if it helps you later too to identify this. You're going to have these pages, so I would just make sure you've got these pages with you when you do the test. You don't really need like the whole book, obviously, but I would make sure you've got chapter 8 with you and these pages. It's just two pages, really, okay? Um, number 35 says this. Where to go? It looks like the integral of 1 over u squared, square root of u squared, oh wait, I think I got the wrong one because ours is subtraction with the variable second. Hang on. It's the next one. It's number 44. Number 44. Um, U squared, and then this one is A squared minus u squared du. This is what 44 says, okay? Um, the difference between this one and 35 was that the value underneath the radical was switched, which made the constant the um, first, or the second term instead of the first term. And our constant is our first term, right, of the subtraction underneath the radical. So as you're taking a look at this, what you're going to do is you're going to identify what a and u are in your problem. So what is our a in our problem? It's 1. What is our u in our problem? It's just x. So this is a really simple substitution step, right? And it tells you on this page what the result should be. It should equal negative the square root of a squared minus u squared over a squared u plus c. So this whole lesson is just figuring out which formula it matches, and then it gives you the answer. The most you ever have to do is a simple u substitution or a value you know, identification. You're identifying the a's and the u's. And we may actually have, and we will here in a minute, actually have a legit u substitution to do. Um, but this one's not because a and x are this, or u and x are the same thing. So our answer then is going to be this equals negative the same square root we have, which is 1 minus x squared, over a squared. Well, our a is 1. It's not very exciting. U, and our U is X, and then we have a plus C. It's easy, right? The hardest part is identifying which formula it is that's the right one. 
And as you see, I actually have the 135 is what I wrote down in my notes when I was looking for it, and I, I very quickly made a mistake, right? Because I was failing to look at the variable versus the constant. So you can make mistakes very easily, but when you get to the point on your test that you're doing this, I am going to ask that you identify which it is, you know, which formula from the tables that you're using. So that if it is an issue that you identified the wrong formula, but you did what I just did here and you used 35 instead of 44, I know, and I'll be able to do partial credit accordingly. Does that make sense? Great. Let's do another one. Okay, so this one right here has an E in it, right? So as I'm taking a look at these tables, I'm probably going to be looking for something that has an, a variable with an E in it. Um, and the reason you might look at this even and say, okay, well, but maybe there's a U substitution where U is equal to E to the X. And then it would look a lot like arctangent. And that's true, it would. The problem is that there's absolutely nothing else in the problem that would be the DU. Do you see that? So it's not going to be able to be an arctangent because the U would not be, the U would be there, but the DU for it would not be. Um, so on this one, Where's my paper? Here it is. 84 is the right substitution uh, or the right table form to use. And let me write down for you so you can see what 84 looks like. On number 84, it uses the integral of 1 over 1 plus e to the u du. That's not exactly what we have, but it's close. What would our u be? 2x. And if I did that, what would du be? 2dx, which is not in my problem. But constants that are not in my problem are really not a problem at all, right? We just put a fraction in to compensate. And the fraction that we would put in to compensate, of course, is 1 half. So this is 1 half of the integral of 1 over the 1 plus e to the u du, which exactly now matches the table form that we actually identified. And this one on the table tells us that this is u minus the natural log of 1 plus e to the u plus c. So we're going to be able to do this. We've got 1 half, and then we have u. Our u is 2x minus the natural log. of 1 plus e to the u, so that's e to the 2x, and then plus c. Um, you can put the plus c in parentheses or not in parentheses, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're not really going to multiply it by the 1 half. We are going to distribute the 1 half through, so I'm going to get x minus 1 half natural log of 1 plus e to the 2x plus c. Notice the natural log does not have absolute values afterwards. Do you know why that's happening? It can't be negative. Yeah. Um, it isn't wrong to put them. They're just not necessary. Um, e to a power is always a positive value. If you remember the graph of e to the x, so to speak, it's always above the x-axis. And then you add one to it, and it's even further above the x-axis. So that's why you don't see the absolute values there. All right, one more. This one is cosine of x over sine squared plus 1. Now, when you look at this one, and honestly, as you're looking at all of these, your first step should not be, let me go see what I can find in the table that has a sine squared and a cosine in it. Probably not be a most helpful step. Really looking to see what kind of u substitutions you can or you cannot make is the very first thing you should look at. So taking a look at this one, this is sine squared plus 1. You might look at this and first think, Pythagorean identity, and very quickly you're like, oh, there's a wrong sign for that to happen, right? If this were a Pythagorean identity, it should be 1 minus sine squared, not 1 plus sine squared. So Pythagorean identity gets, like, thrown out the window, and it's unfortunate. However, you do have the ability to identify a U substitution that will work. What would a U substitution be that would be helpful potentially here? least worth trying. What was it? Yeah. If u is sine of x, what would du be? Cosine of x. And do you have one of those here? Yes, you do. Now, I'm going to change this for a second to being a, a v substitution, and the reason I am is because 
The tables are all in terms of U, and eventually here I want to identify them by comparing the U from the table with whatever's in my problem. So I'd like my variables to be different to make that comparison, so I'm going to call this a V substitution. Um, as we do this, we can identify then that we have the cosine dx, that's the dv, and then we have one on the top, and then my denominator then is the square root of what? Right, the square root of v squared plus 1. Yeah, so maybe this is one of those um, arc functions. Unfortunately, it, it isn't um, because it has, I think there's the wrong sign in the middle, if I'm remembering right. Um, so as we're looking at our table options, then for this one, the right one, for this one that ends up matching is 98. Let me write down what 98 looks like. And you'll get quicker at identifying which ones match um, as you're working with these. But 98 looks like this. It's the integral of du, that's how they write it, over the square root of u squared plus or minus a squared. So as we're looking at that, what is our u as we're identifying pieces? Yeah, it's going to be just V, and we'll, we'll do that replacement here in a second, yeah. And then what would our A be? One. It would be 1. So the integral of this, according to number 98, says that this will be the natural log of U plus the square root of U squared plus or minus the A squared plus C. So we're going to get the natural log of u. Well, our u was v, and v, like Abby said, is the sine of x. So we have sine of x. And then it says plus the square root. And if you care, look carefully, this is the square root of the original stuff, right? It's the square root of u squared plus or minus a squared. That's the same piece that was right up here at the very top here, and that's going to be the same square root that we started with over here. So you can write it if you want to as the square root of v squared plus 1, but then recognize, remember, that v is our sine squared. So this is going to be the square root of sine squared of x plus 1. And it isn't plus or minus, it's whatever it was in the problem, and ours was plus. And then we have plus c. Um, absolute values are not in this particular problem as it's identified. Let me see if there's any particular reason on the why. Yeah, it's because when you have the sine squared right here, well, at least the radical part of it, the square root of the sine squared plus 1, that one's always positive, correct? Yeah. Um, and then we're adding it to sine. Yeah. Sine x could be negative, though. I'm going to guess because they match. They can't be the same. It's yeah, not going to be negative because they're the same time. Plus one or it's going to be greater than that. Yeah. Negative, right. Yeah, because you're adding it. So um, basically whatever your tables are using is going to identify whether you need the absolute values or not. And this one didn't have absolute values in the table, so they aren't going to end up being necessary. And I think the reason is exactly what Evan was describing.